frustrated. Yep, frustrated is definitely the word. Been waiting for LED strips that everybody's been raving about for months. They don't exist in, in Europe. They've become available again in the US. If and when they'll arrive in this part of the world, nobody knows. What to do then? I thought I'd take a look at the connection where the LEDs go and see if I can fathom out what it's actually doing. Maybe even fashion some LEDs of my own. Why not? Warning! This video is presented for informational purposes only. If you decide to follow any of the things that I do here and fry your flight controller or burn your house down, I shall not be deemed responsible. There are four connections there. This cable, I think, actually came from a run cam or something, but it, it fits. It's a fair bet that one out of the four is going to be ground. Let's see if we can find that. Putting my meter on continuity. I'll put one probe in the negative side of the power connection. Check these wires. The white one here. Nothing. The yellow one. Similarly, nothing. This black one. Nothing. So, last chance pays for all. Yay! So we know that this guy is ground. Having worked that out then, let's try and see if we can find out or deduce what some of the other connections are. Making sure not to let any of the others touch. Let's plug her in. Very naughty I know, but I don't have a transmitter on at the moment. Let's then check. Connection next to ground is this yellow wire. And that's measuring just over 4 volts, which is promising. The white one, not a lot. And similarly, this one, not a lot. If I were a betting man, which I am not, I would say that we have a power line here, and these two will be the signals that instruct the LED patterns and colours. Let's take a look and see if we can verify that. This is a cheap and simple DIY oscilloscope that I made. Let's connect our ground to that. And we want to be investigating these two wires. I do have a very nice rival oscilloscope, but this should do. So testing on one of the probes here. There anyway, I hope you can see that there's a, a data signal. If we swap now to our white wire, similarly we have data on that. So our theory is correct so far. We have ground, we have plus four volts-ish, we have two data signals for each of the strips. Well, that's all fine and dandy. How do we move forward? What I'm going to try is just hooking up this NeoPixel ring. Now, this is an Adafruit NeoPixel 12 LED device, and this is using the WS2812B LEDs. The B means that these will operate from 3.3 volts to 5 volts. So we should be in the ballpark with four. Let's disconnect our battery now and do a little soldering. I have then the NeoPixel ring connected up to one of the data connections, the other one hanging around there. I've got my transmitter configured now for the momentary switch to be on channel six, which is the channel that controls the LED pattern. Let's then see what we have. Throttle disabled. Safe mode 1.6. Well, there's interesting for you. Two red LEDs and a circling pattern. Red port left, so this is the port side output. And even though we've only got the 12 LEDs, it's providing what I believe is the correct sort of pattern. Let's flip our channel 6 switch now. And the pattern changes. Again. Ooh, that's bright. The 
I think that's back to the beginning now, so that's, I think that's five different modes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then back to the beginning. Success! Okay, we don't really want a round set of LEDs, although I thought they looked quite spectacular. Almost UFO-ish, you could have a pair of those, and they do do a, a larger diameter NeoPixel, which could be interesting. Let's now find a strip of LEDs and cut that to 13 long and see where we go from there. Here now is my strip of LEDs. The pictures on the web aren't very clear as to how many LEDs there are. I thought that there were 13, but I've now decided to go with strips of 12. Let's see how pretty it looks. 2.7 As we can see then, this is the starboard lights, and for some bizarre reason, instead of being green, the two at the end are, are blue. But I'm happy with that. Looking through the patterns then. All is good. Now one thing is that these strips are considerably wider than the official strips. What I've elected to do is to trim off as much as I can along the edge, so just using the copper pads and the edge of the diode as a guide, I just go along each side and trim off the excess there. It's not needed really, it's just the excess copper. And that's going to save a couple of millimetres. But still, it's not going to pass through the nacelle or into the body here without some modification. My weapon of choice for opening up the foam here is going to be this miniature razor saw. These are really handy, and especially on foam, a craft knife doesn't really cut it. <laughs> but uh, one of these little razor saws, I've already made some cuts here. But, um, just moving that backwards and forwards opens it up. It needs to be at quite an angle to get the strips through. It will be the cable end that goes in, in here, but just for demonstration, as I've cut that out, it's now able to pass into the body there. So I'm going to repeat that procedure with the holes on either side of the nacelles, paying special attention not to cut through the motor wires. This is how I've threaded the LED strips through. I've just soldered some very fine kynar wire onto the ends of the strips and I can use that twisted together to pull the LEDs through the slots that I've made. Everything's finally installed now. The little thin wires I've terminated onto the ends of the connector wires there. Let's fire up and have a look. Another little tip I like to put a, a piece of ribbon that I've just glued the ends together. It helps to get the battery out. 1.7 So there we have it, our starboard and port side lights. If you're wondering what the strange voice announcement of the number is, it's the battery voltage when it comes up. I have that on my transmitter so at the moment. 4.2 that's the telemetry, obviously, coming from the receiver. Let's just cycle through the patterns one more time. I know you're wondering, what's it going to look like in the dark? And there we have it. Okay. They don't shine through the wing quite as well as the originals, but that'll do me up until such times as Horizon get their act together and I can buy their LEDs in Europe. But what's that I hear you ask now? What about the red tail lights? How about a couple of laser diodes? How cool is that? Yep, just in case you hadn't realised, I am certifiable. Cheerio.